In this video, we are going to be talking about one of the most powerful SEO tools in existence. And guess what? It's free. And on top of that, we're going to be taking tips from someone who has 2 million, 2 million per month visitors to his website. So this is Tony Hill. You may have seen him in some recent videos, right? He's been making his rounds on YouTube, but he happens to be a friend of mine on one of the forums that we're in together. But nonetheless, Tony Hill, if you haven't gotten on his newsletter, I will say, please click these. You know, he's building his newsletter right now. This guy's been in the game a long time, but he did this. He did the Google Trends as a gold mine for finding keywords. Keep in mind, this is a guy that has over 2 million uh, searches on Google per month for one of his websites. Do you feel me? So when he talks, I listen. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we're going to look at his nine steps right here, and we're going to blow through them together. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's see if we can optimize it in any way, and let's go. So we're on Google Trends. We need Google Trends. This is all about Google Trends. And what I've done, I've taken Tony's step one. It's pick an article topic, right? There's going to be a lot in between the cracks, right? I, I know how SEOs work, and they say a lot, and you, you got to grab it. Don't, don't miss it, all right? So he says, I do this for new and existing content. In other words, what does that mean? It means that he revises old posts old, I can pronounce things, old posts as well, right? He's going to do this with new content, old content. Then I'll head to Google Trends. You want to find the core topic entity for your article, right? All right, so he says, for example, top 10 small home office ideas of 2023. Let's see what happens if we type that into Google Trends. Nothing is going to show up. So what do we do, right? Tony tells us what to do. Let's just keep going on with it. The problem here is this is just too much. So we have to find the root of what we're talking about, which is small home office, right? And then here we go. Now we have some data we can play with. Well, step two, he sets the audience, right? Where are the people? Where are the eyeballs? Oftentimes, we search for just U.S. We want to cater to the U.S. market because it has some of the most money in the world. There's other markets that do that as well. Uh, U.K., Canada, stuff like that. And he says, uh, if you reach the U.K. and C.A., I go through that process for each country. So he's targeting country by country because the results will vary. So step three is set the time period, right? So let's see what he says. This stuff matters. There are three main ones I use. 30 days for brand new trending topics to watch and add a few to an article. Um, 90 days new trending topics that have a strong momentum, which are most likely turned into their own articles and then past 12 months, right? So that's what he does. And in order to do that, you can come here, you can say past day, 90 days. So he said, this is a strong indicator on if it's worthy, right? Tony, you can comment on the video. Am I right here? If it's showing strong momentum in 90 days, does that mean that you consider writing an article? That's how I'm reading that, right? So, so 30, 90, which are most likely to turn into their own articles or at least sections within an article. And then past 12 months definitely will show topics and queries that should have their own articles. So good stuff, let's jump to the next one. So step four is set the search type. And we can do that right here. Web search, see this? We have image search, news search, Google shop, and YouTube search, right? What does he do? I think he's talking about what he's gonna do later, but for each step in the process, so this is a rinse and repeatable thing, I then change it to all the other types such as image, YouTube, et cetera. Each can surface some unique entities and phrases to include in an article. So I will tell you this, SEO, on-page SEO is like being an engineer. You need to consider the actual structure of a sentence in the words you are including. I'm creating a tool to do this, hopefully automatically. I haven't seen it on the market yet, so we're working very hard to have NLP and some AI mixed in there based upon SERPs. But the point is, the point is, why does he care about entities and phrases to include in an article, right? Well, Google, because this is Google, you know, um, information, Google Trends, it's going to show us exactly what to consider down here, right? I think we're going to get into that. So let's see what he says next. So yeah, here it goes. The next step is review related topics. This is the first place I'll go. Okay, super important because topics are basically entities to Google. Listen, Listen, this means Google knows exactly what these are and how they connect to other topics. You've seen my videos on like crystallization, content hubs, there's a million names for it. We are talking about this right now, entities, entities. It's how Google understands the web, so they're important. Review related topics, top. When I select top for related topics, let's just go here, boom. Related topics go down the top. This is what he's talking about. So these are entities, okay, office, building function, small topic. Okay. So that's an entity, small. We get that home. All right. Small office slash home office. This one right here, 
This is going to be important and it's going to go on and on. But let's see what else Tony has to say. I prioritize which ones I use based on what's listed at the top of the list and work my way down. So if we go here, office building function, that doesn't really work for us. Small, yes, it's kind of like a describer home, but this one right here, I think this is going to give us some juice. Now check it out. This might be the most valuable thing. Listen, this might be the most valuable thing in this whole darn thing. Maybe, maybe not. Tip, use these entities when talking about your core entity. All right. Ideally within the same sentence or paragraph to make that strong semantic connection. I told you SEOs think like engineers down to the sentence structure. All right. So review related topics and Ryzen. So he's telling us come over here, come to Ryzen, right? Let's click here. Modular design, sideboard. All of a sudden, listen, all of a sudden we're, we're getting some clarity here. If it's an existing article I'm updating, I'll set the time period at the top to the last 12 months, then go through the process below. Then I'll set it to 90 and 30. So he's going through like he's searching for treasure. What should I include in my article? Google Trends has an incredible amount of data. I mean, look down here. Look down here. You think it'd be wise to include some of these things like modular design? It's a breakout topic. Let's click on it. Let's click on it. See what happens. This over the past 90 days. It's pretty high up there. Let's see past five years. I'm just curious. I'm going off the uh, the rails a bit here, Tony, but I'm just looking. All right. So this is a consistently interesting thing to people. Modular design. Let's get back. Let's hopefully get back to where we were. All right. We clicked modular design. I'm going to get back to Tony's thing. But listen, when you click a new topic, which is an entity, then it gives you even more entities to consider. Right. But we need to stay on what we were. Small office. Yeah. Home office. Here we are. So he says, I cherry pick from this list that makes the most sense to include. Sometimes these topics don't have a lasting strong connection. If you're unsure, you can always export the list and send it to ChatGPT with this prompt. Oh, wonderful. Let's do that. So here we go, ChatGPT. I imported it right here. It's a CSV and I said attach as a list and then you need to have your title of the article, which should be the query or closely related to it, right? And ChatGPT did a pretty darn good job, right? It gave us a list right here. Look here, scoring it between three and five, everything else it just didn't include. So it helps us. It gave us 15 things here to consider for it. So farmhouse, why would we care about it? Well, a farmhouse style decor might be a trend in design for small home offices right? Nice. Mini. This might refer to compact or miniature furniture. So we're letting ChatGPT do the heavy lifting of data analysis for us so we can just make the executive decisions. Now remember, this was number five, a lot here. And at the end, he says, according to Corey Gobur and Gail Breton on Authority Hacker. So Corey recently did a podcast on the Authority Hacker YouTube. Go check it out. I have a link in the description. Associated trend and topics Google knows about with your site will help you rank higher. Go watch that killer interview. And I agree. I'll have a link in the description. Go check that one out. So step six is review related queries, which are right here to the right. So small desk, home office ideas, etc. Let's see what he says. These are pure search terms people are using that Google may or may not have an entity connection with. Listen, people are always asking like, what is the alternative to SEMrush and Ahrefs? I can't afford it. Well, these are pure search terms people are using, right? Right here. This is free. Right here, you can see what the connections are. Related queries are a great resource for exact phrases to include on the page. So these right here, exact search, you know, people are typing this into Google and consider it on your page. I like that. I always make sure they're grammatically correct when adding. Google is smart enough to know it's the same as the query. Um, review related queries top. All right, so he wants us to go here. That's where we are, top right there. I usually have the time period set to the last 12 months for an existing article I'm updating. All right, let's go here. 12 months. Let's go 12 months. Boom. 12 months. So you see how you can toggle all these different things. Um, interesting. There's questions here. Very interesting. Small home office. See how it changed? It changed big time. Nonetheless, um, let's see here. Good. If it's a new one, I'll set it to the past five years. So if it's new articles he's creating. So most of these queries will make it. Wow. Most of these queries will make it to my article. It's often a great source for finding other ways to talk about the main topic. Interested. If I'm unsure about which ones to include, I'll send the list to ChatGPT and gave the same prompt as earlier. Then he's going to go to Ryzen, which we did. Okay. That's why it was top versus Ryzen. I clicked Ryzen. There we go. Very, very interesting. This is where you can have a competitive advantage by including queries people are starting to search for. In other words, all right, most of your competitors are probably sleeping on these. For the new and existing articles, I export each list with the time period set to 12, 90, and 30. Very interesting. He's going deep, 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 right? 
So for number seven, he just gathers it all. Like he's saying, he does 12 months, 90, 30 days. He grabs it all and he pushes it to, I think, a spreadsheet, right? Um, Google Sheets, right, to help filter out all duplicates. This is how he filters out duplicates. And then I didn't know this because I didn't read the whole post all the way. I skimmed it. <laughs> he says, eight and nine, step eight and nine. He says, subscribe to my brand new uh, free newsletter link in the bio to get step eight and nine. And that's what I'll encourage you to do. Check out Tony's newsletter link in the description. He does more than all of this, right? Where I you know, started reaching out to him. He did a recent forum post where he's like, I was able to, to lose all of my traffic on Google, not by choice, and then gain it all back and more. And we're talking millions per month, right? So this guy knows what he's talking about. It's very fun to talk with him. He thinks differently than a lot of people. So hopefully this video was, was helpful to see an outside perspective, how others think about this. It really comes back to like an engineer's mind, in my opinion, down to the sentence structure. We can use data. Let's use data. Everyone loves data in this space, but how can we use it well? ChatGPT helps us so much. But anyways, I hope you like this and uh, please subscribe, like all those things, and I'll catch you on the next one.